In this video, I will review some of the key features of a Corel Draw document and how they affect printing and building art. It's important to learn how to get your document set up properly from the beginning to help your design process flow smoothly. Of course, for any new project, you need to start a new document. Let me show you how to do that. First, we can come up to the File menu and choose File New or New from Template. Or if we come back inside the interface, we can click the New button. So let's click that. Up comes our dialog box with our document options. Uh, we have several presets to choose from. So let me see what we got. So these are our last use uh, presets and here's the choice of all the presets, total presets. Uh, if you're doing a web graphic, you can choose web and your document uh, measurements will be set to pixels. If you're doing some laser engraving or some sublimation, you can choose the default RGB. If you're doing offset printing, choose default CMYK. Uh, Corel Draw default is just the default palette and the default document. And if you want to do a custom page, like I use a 13 by 19 printer, I'm going to make a custom page and I'm going to save it as a preset. So let's click custom. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to set 13 by 19. And I want this to be a portrait page. So I'm going to click portrait. And now if I come up to these three dots, I can save this. So let's go in here and say save the preset. And let's name it 13 by 19. That way it will be in my presets every time I do a new document and I can choose that anytime I need. If I do want to change or set the specific color mode, I can do that right here. If I need multiple pages, I can set that here. If I know the name ahead of time, I can assign the na name ahead of time. And But all these options can also be changed inside the interface but any at any time. So I'm going to click OK and see how our document gets set up. There it is. Once inside the document, all those settings we just set can be changed if you need to. Let me show you where. On the, with nothing selected, up in the toolbar here is our page size and our orientation. There are also more presets to choose from on the left here. If you scroll up or down, there's lots of choices. Also, in the layout menu is our page size, page layout, page background settings. If you go into those, then we'll get to those options as well. And a bonus tip here that you may not know about is if you double click on the shadow in your document, it will jump right to the page settings and you can change some of those settings we talked about and the other, some of the other settings are over here on the left. Document, if you want to have multiple pages of different sizes, you have to make sure this button is turned on. So in my document, my first page is an eight and a half by 11 letter page and my second page is set to the business card preset and my third page is set to 13 by 19 so I can have a large and small t-shirt art ready to go on this page. Another setting in a new document that I like to tweak is the duplicate distance. When I duplicate objects I want them to land right on top of each other but the default duplicate distance up here with nothing selected shows at 0.25 by 0.25 inches uh, to the right and up um, but I want it to be zero so let's with nothing selected let's set these to zero and tab off of it so there's, now they're set to zero, 0, I want to shift and select my cupcakes because I want to make some extra cupcakes on the left. So shift and keep clicking all these cupcakes. And now we're going to do control D or edit menu and duplicate. And then if we start to drag and hold control, we can move the cupcakes duplicates right over exactly parallel to the originals we created with our duplicate distance set at zero and zero. Another key thing to know about your document and printing is that anything off the page or on the desktop will not print. So if you add manual registration marks for printing screens or anything like that to identify your color separations, make sure the object or text is on your page, not on the desktop. So if you need different units of measure in your document, say millimeters or pixels, we can easily change that in our document. With nothing selected, look for units. Right now I'm set to inches, but if I want millimeters, I can come down here, choose millimeters. If I want pixels, there's pixels. So let's click millimeters and our rulers and everything change to millimeters. If you need to go back to inches, click inches. That's how you change your units of measure in a Corel Draw document. The tweak I like to make to the default Corel document is to add a background color. Uh, the default page is always white, so adding this contrast just helps me see my artwork better. So let me show you how to do that. If we double click on our shadow here, we can click on background 
and come up here to solid and click the drop down and we can choose a light gray. Whenever I do use this option though, I always uncheck this print and export background because it just always interferes or you forget about it that it's on. So I always turn that off, it's just helpful. And then click OK. So there's our gray background. Another way to add a background color is to, with nothing selected, come over to the rectangle tool and double click. What that does is creates a rectangle the size of the page. And now we can come over here to the color palette and set any color we want. The one trick though with using a rectangle is that you can easily move it when you're manipulating artwork. So what I like to do is lock it. But sometimes you can't even click on it when you want to. Like right now, I have another rectangle that's locked on top of that, but I wanna get to the, the purple one. But the, there's one setting in Corel that kinda interferes sometimes that you just wanna turn it off so that it doesn't mess you up. So this is called Treat is Filled with nothing selected, Look for this icon right here. And that's just trying to let this object be treated as filled, but we want to turn that off. As soon as we turn that off and try to click on our box, now our rectangle works fine. But I'm gonna undo that and put that back, but now I wanna lock it just so it stays in place while I'm manipulating other artwork. If we right click and choose lock, it will lock it and keep it in place. Some other tips I have is for using the rulers and the guidelines when you're making artwork. So, did you know that you can move the zero zero point of in, Corel, in the Corel document? Right now it's currently set to this bottom left-hand corner. But what if you need it up to this top left-hand corner because you're always designing in the upper left-hand corner and you're trying to keep it precise and all that? You can click in the corner of the rulers and drag to the top left corner. Now your zero zero is up here. And then that way then when if you need a ruler at one inch and one inch, they're all set. You just drag them from the rulers. And if you want to delete a ruler, just select it and delete it. If you would like to reset that ruler orientation back down to this point, just double click in the corner. Thank you for watching. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on the Discovery Center. Here you can download a written copy of this tutorial and the exercise to follow along. You will also find other helpful tutorials on CorelDRAW.